In this lecture, you're going to be introduced to the various types of glassware you'll use in the laboratory. You'll res you're responsible for being able to identify the glassware and their uses. You're also responsible for knowing which are appropriate to measure with and which aren't. Finally, and most importantly, you need to be able to know the correct number of sig figs you can get from the various instruments. Without further ado, let's begin. These pieces of glassware are, glassware are called watch glasses. It's easy to remember their name because they essentially look like huge contact lenses, like contact lenses for an elephant. Their name implies their function. They are simply used to observe chemical reactions occur. Beep. These are test tubes. Test tubes are used simply to hold small amounts of chemicals, um, to watch reactions occur, or simply for storage for another function. They are not used for measuring in any way, shape, or form. That white block that you see them placed in is called a test tube um, rack. And that's it. Move on to the next slide. Beep. There are several very important pieces of glassware on this slide and other pieces of chemical equipment. First and foremost, you see the scupula. The scupula is the long metal thing that kind of looks like a prison shiv in the center of the table. It's used just like you would use a spoon. It's used to scoop out amounts of chemicals to transport from one to the other. Obviously, you're only going to be using solids when you use a scupula. Another piece of a chemical equipment you see on this slide is eyedroppers. Eyedroppers are used to add small amounts of chemicals to a reaction. Very fascinating, you see a rubber policeman. See the glass rod with a squarish looking thing at the end of it, a piece of rubber at the end? It functions in the same way a balloon would function. It's called a rubber policeman because it's used for sweeping or policing chemicals. So that's what a rubber policeman is, is used. It's kind of like anything you have, would have the urge to grab a paintbrush to move around with in chemistry, you would use a rubber policeman for it, just like you would a little bitty broom. Then there's the glass straw rod, which is a very undramatic, long glass straw looking thing. Um, glass straw rod is used to aid in the pouring of chemicals, as well as for stirring. I also want you to write down the word Joker right now. Would you write down the word Joker? The Joker fights Batman. I hope you're writing down the word Joker. After you've written down the word Joker, move on to the next slide. Beep. In this slide, you have a funnel. A funnel is used to help in the pouring of chemicals into containers that have small mouths. Um, you'll also use them for filtration in some instances. Beep. This is an Erlenmeyer flask. Erlenmeyer flasks are containers used to hold chemicals. They're particularly used to hold chemicals for titration. The unique thing about Erlenmeyer flasks is their sides are sloped and they have a narrow top. This means when you have a chemical that evaporates easily, the gas will hit the sides of this container because they're sloped condense and roll back down into the liquid. Also, if you're working with a chemical process where you're going to have splashes occurring, because the slope sides of the container are directly above the chemical, the chemical has a high chance of hitting the side of the container and then rolling back in down into your mixture. So that explains the shape of the Erlenmeyer flask. An important thing to note is Erlenmeyer flasks have what appear to be volume markings on their side. These volume markings are not calibrated. You cannot use them for measuring. They're purely decorative. Do not use them for measuring. As long as you're writing things down, why don't you write down the word penguin? I hope you're writing down the word penguin. I'm glad you wrote down the word penguin. Move on, beep. This is a crucible and crucible lid. They are used for heating things directly into the flame. Um, they'll be used with some other pieces of glassware we'll see in the upcoming slide. Beep. Crucibles are used in conjunction with crucible tongs. The crucible tongs are the scissor looking things shown on the table there. They're shaped funny for a reason. The bulge in the tongs is used to hold the crucible. The beaked lid is used to lift the lid. Beep. This slide shows a clay, clay triangle. On the last slide, you saw a crucible sitting in a clay triangle. 
The clay triangle sits atop an iron ring and is used to hold the crucible in the flame. This is an evaporating dish. It is a Y container that is used to allow chemicals to evaporate. It's simply a little bowl um, with a large surface area to enhance evaporation. Next slide. Beep. This is a test tube holder. It looks like a large paper clip. It is used to hold test tubes when you wish to move them around in, into flames or to move the test tubes in and out of solution. Next slide. Beep. Ah, beaker, one of my all-time favorite Muppets. A beaker is the equivalent of a cup in chemistry. A beaker is used to hold chemicals. Its shape is such that it's very easy to pour into or out of a beaker. It is not used for measuring. Once again, just like an Erlenmeyer flask, a beaker has some pretty markings on the side. They are used simply because they look pretty. Those volume markings on the side of a beaker are not calibrated. They are not used for measuring. Never, ever, ever use a beaker for measuring. Also, write down the word Riddler. I hope you write down the word Riddler. The Batman fights the Riddler. Riddler. Oh, Riddler also turns out to be Hush. Oh, did I ruin that storyline for you? Riddler. I hope you write down the word Riddler. Move on to the next slide. Beep. This slide shows a thermometer holder. The thermometer holder is a very small rubber triangle. You can see I included a dime in the picture next door to the thermometer holder to give you an idea of how small it is. It's a little triangle that slides around your thermometer and prevents it from rolling. Thermometers are circular, right? So if you leave them on a desk, they're likely to roll around and break real easily. You slide this little piece of rubber over the top of them and boom, they're not rolling anywhere. So that's a thermometer holder. Next slide, beep. All right, in this picture you see a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder and a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. These are the only pieces of glassware on this entire presentation that can be actually used to measure something. They're actual measuring tools. They're more than containers. They're so important that we're going to look at each of them in a little bit more detail on the next slide, next couple slides. Beep. Here's a close-up of the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. It is marked to the nearest one milliliter. What I mean by that is every single one of those blue lines, the space between every single one of those blue lines is one milliliter. However, it's considered good form to be able to estimate one more sig fig. In other words, if the level of water is between two of those blue lines, you can estimate how far it is between those two lines, whether it's a fourth of the distance, a sixth of the distance, a seventh of the distance. You can very accurately, especially with long-term practice, estimate that distance. Therefore, instead of reporting volume in the 100 milliliter graduated cylinder to the nearest milliliter, you actually report it to the nearest tenth of a milliliter because of your estimation. So, you can record volumes to the tenth of a milliliter with a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. All right, next slide, beep. This is a 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. It is marked to the nearest tenth of a milliliter. If you look there, you'll notice that the space between the nine and the 10 is separated by nine little marks. The distance between each one of those little marks is a tenth of a milliliter. Just like with a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder, you can estimate one additional significant figure. You can tell with practice whether or not the water level is half the way between two marks or a fourth of the way between two marks or the seventh of the way between two marks. So you can always estimate one additional sig fig. So it's marked to the tenth of a milliliter, but you can report to the hundredth. You can estimate that hundredth place. So you should report volumes taken in the 10 milliliter graduated cylinder to the 100th position. Next slide, B. This slide shows your chemical splash goggles. These are the most important piece of lab equipment you will use. Because without these, you're not allowed to use any of the other pieces of lab equipment. You should have chemical splash goggles when you arrive in lab. You can purchase them either at Lowe's or at the College Bookstore. 
Lowe's is a really good. Make sure that they have chemical splash goggles. Don't come to lab with wood chipper goggles. Make sure they're chemical splash goggles. They will have those four little vents around, this white little vents around the side that you see there if they are chemical splash goggles. Write down the word Catwoman. Please write down the word Catwoman. Batman also fought Catwoman. Once you've written down the word Catwoman, you've concluded this lecture. The 